Hey guys, it's Viv here from The Crew, and I'm gonna take you on a deep dive into the most important book in the world. Here on The Crew, we have traveled all over the world, making TV shows and films. We have visited popular tourist destinations, been granted access to military controlled regions, and traveled to all seven continents. So we have a pretty good idea of what it means to move around this world, and a lot of it, hinges on this little book. Number one, passports expire before the expiry date. The only people required to honor that expiry date are the people who issued your passport. If I'm traveling to France or Brazil, they don't have to let me in. A lot of countries don't want your passport expiring while you're in their country. But you might be thinking, well, what if my travel dates have me leaving before the expiration date? Sometimes you end up getting stuck in a country longer than you expected. Unfortunately, some people also use traveling as a way to immigrate into a country. And so these nations want to make sure that that doesn't happen to you and that you have some buffer room. Now, depending on the country that you're traveling to, this buffer room can change a bit. Most countries in Europe have a 90 day buffer, but countries like Brazil, uh, China, India require six months. This is also the case for visas. I have come into the United States on a valid working visa with two months left and they've pulled me up and threatened not to let me in. The only reason they let me in was because I had another visa in process. And this is also the case for pages. Some countries won't issue a visa into your passport unless you have enough pages left. Now I've actually been caught out on this. Now a page is just one side of these and they actually have numbers on them. So that's 40, so that means that's page 40. And that's 39, so that's page 39. So that's one page and that's two pages, although it's physically, one, you get the idea. Now, depending on the country, it depends on the number of pages they want left. And this can range anything from one page through to six pages. Point number two, selfies are not allowed. When it comes to taking passport photos, there are a lot of different regulations, guidelines of the photographs, and they can vary in sizes. Unfortunately, you, they will not accept a handheld self-portrait. Um, so unless you're a photographer with the right skills to get the framing and the lighting correct, then you probably have to go down to a drugstore. There are a few apps out nowadays, but the main point I wanted to make here is to get extra copies. You can use them to apply for visas, and also if something happens to your passport and you need to get it renewed. Third point here is visas, and I'm sorry I tricked you a little bit here because there are some sub points. First thing is types of visas. For some passports, there is a lot of countries you can visit visa free. And that's the first category. You can enter into a country just with your passport. You don't need a visa. Second category is visa on arrival. Visa when you show up at the immigration of that country and they will issue a visa as you're walking through the gate. Um, Nepal does this, for example. Third category is e-visa. And this is where you apply for a visa online before your departure. Usually it takes somewhere between 24 hours and a week. You print it off and then you take it with you through the airport to immigrations of that country. India, for example, does this. The final category is visa required. Um, and that will be like this Chinese visa. And it's a physical piece of paper that is stuck into your passport. And this must be approved beforehand. It usually requires filling out a lot of paperwork and going to a consulate and actually handing your passport in. 3B, visas are not reciprocal. When I visited Kyrgyzstan, uh, as an Australian, I can enter into Kyrgyzstan visa free. Kyrgyzstan nationals cannot visit Australia visa free. It does seem unfair, but unfortunately it's a product of complex international relations. But the main point I wanted to make here was don't make any assumptions about visas and check what visas you need based on what passport you hold. 3C, visas take time. The longest I've waited for a visa is up to eight months for a US working visa. Some are a fast turnaround, like uh, travel visas to Africa. A note here is that when you are applying for visas, you will likely be asked what countries you have traveled to, because it should be no surprise that not all countries are friends. And so there are some countries that will be red flags for other countries. And be aware of where you travel and how that can impact where you travel to other places. 3D, consulates will take your passport. Getting a visa is actually, it's a physical piece of paper that is stuck into your passport. And so that means you're gonna have to hand your passport in and be without a passport for a certain amount of time. So a few tips here is to take some photocopies of your passport. Photocopies are not a legal document that you can then use to travel on, but they're good to have so that if anything happens to your real passport, you can expedite processing. Also, if you can't physically hand your passport into the consulate that's issuing that visa, then I suggest, highly suggest, that you use a secure and tracked couriering service. 3E, if you get a new passport, you need to get a new visa. 
Now, this can actually be a little bit frustrating because sometimes, and this certainly happened to me, you might have a valid visa in this passport, but the passport expires, or in my case, it runs out of pages, and then you need to get a new passport, but you've got valid visas in this old one. Most countries will not let you take a valid visa out of one passport and put it in a new one. You have to apply for new visas in your new passport. There are, however, four exceptions. Brazil, India, Saudi Arabia, and China. Oh, you gotta show the paper. No, the no driver. Baby blue paper. Your passport. Oh, oh passport. Passport. Give me a minute. Two, one. Uno. Do you need uh, my passport with my yeah, visa? Because the thing is, I need it. I, I know, I know. Do you know I my situation? To. Special situation? She's special. special. She's special. Point number four, cruise ships take your passport. Now this is an interesting one because technically your passport is not your property. For example, to quote the American passport, this passport is the property of the United States. It is unlawful for any person other than the original lawful recipient to use this passport. Now we tried to argue this point pretty strongly on our cruise to Antarctica. However, they made the argument that they like to hold all the passengers' passports to make it easier to move large groups of people through ports. It ultimately, for us, it boiled down to an ultimatum. They said uh, either give up your passport or get off the ship. So it ultimately boils down to a personal decision. Do you want to engage with a private company that is asking you to surrender your passport? Point number five, keep your passport on you at all times. This obviously directly contradicts the previous point about surrendering your passport to cruise ships. Now this is a bit of a controversial tip among travelers. Most tourists who have only ever traveled to first world destinations will argue that it's safer to keep the passport in the locked safe in the hotel to avoid pickpockets. Any traveler worth their salt will tell you never to let the passport off your person. This is what will let you into a country, but more importantly, let you out of a country and back into your own country. Many of the places that we've traveled, such as China, India, and throughout parts of Africa, have required us to stop at checkpoints, where military security have asked to see our passport, to see if we're allowed to move through a region. This was certainly the case up in Jammu and Kashmir. Pickpocketing is a concern, which is why I'm saying keep it close to you, but you carry cash on you and you look after that, so treat your passport the same. Some hotels will ask for it when you check in, I suggest that you can certainly offer for them to take a photocopy to keep on their records. If they refuse, go to another hotel. Number six, face tattoos. If you get a face tattoo or you have plastic facial surgery or you lose or gain a lot of weight, you'll have to get a new photo and therefore a new passport because, well, you look different now. Dying or cutting your hair is not a big enough change for a new photo. Number seven, stamps and stickers to worry about. If you've watched our video, what does four S's on your boarding pass mean? You will know that there are certain countries that you visit that will become red flags for other countries. Visiting Israel, for example, can bar you from visiting other Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. Now you may also notice that on your back of your passport, you might start to be collecting some little stickers. These are stickers from independent security contractors. They'll operate airport checkpoints, electronic equipment such as the x-ray scans, and they'll also verify your documents. Can you take them off? Absolutely. Absolutely, once you get home, but they do leave a sticky mess and we think it's cool to leave them on because it adds to the character of a well-traveled passport. Number eight, you can have two passports, two of the same passport, like two Australian passports. Now this can be quite handy for frequent travelers who need to be traveling while their other passport is getting a visa put in it. Now this seems awesome, um, however, it's not easy to come by and it does require a legitimate reason. Now some countries will also allow you to hold two different passports, like an Australian and American passport if you are a dual citizen of both those nations. So um, that's about it. I'm gonna leave you with a quick little fun tip. Just down below, I've included the link to a passport index. Because so much of the information in this vlog depends on what type of passport you have, there's a couple of websites that have actually ranked the various different passports according to their power. And by power, they mean how many countries can you travel to visa-free? But it's a good idea to take a look at it and be encouraged by it because it's basically, this is your ticket to the world. So if you haven't got your passport, go out and get one and start exploring the world. There's like only so many times that you can watch our videos. I mean, honestly, like stop watching our videos and get it out there and then come back and subscribe and watch our videos.